Hello, everyone, and welcome to Papa Hector's podcast. Here we are once again, and I'm going to do a podcast called My Journey in the Spirit, My Journey in Spiritual Work. And there are so many stories here to tell, but I'm just going to kind of like give you a big view so that as you can see the big view maybe we can go into other parts at another time i've gotten this request from a number of people asking me about my own spiritual journey and you know hold on for a second because when i get on here giving you guys podcasts i start thinking of other podcasts ideas that would be good for y'all so sometimes this happens gotta write a little note there anyway so it's quite a long story i've been involved in spiritual path for a long time but before we get into that i have to remind you to subscribe so go ahead and hit subscribe on itunes apple Podcasts, google Podcasts, anchor.fm Stitcher or Spotify, as well as Breaker. There's like a million podcast apps. And you can look me up, Papa Hector Salva. You'll find me easily, and all you have to do is click subscribe. You'll get the updates to this podcast and many others as quickly as they come out. Secondly, we have YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. You can look me up there at Hungan Hector, H O U N G A N H E C T O R. <clears throat> and lastly, HectorSalva.com, where you can get the newsletter and all that great stuff. So these are places where you're going to want to subscribe. You're going to want to get on the newsletter on YouTube. We do. I sometimes do videos that I don't do on the podcast and vice versa. On the Instagram we're, and Facebook, we try to like keep you in the loop there. And also keep throwing out some of that spiritual wisdom, that wisdom from our traditions at you. So moving on to my spiritual path, my spiritual journey. So, I've been involved in these traditions since I was a kid. I grew up around Espiritismo, Sanse, and La Veintiuna Divisione. All three of these practices in my family um, were divided. So, what I mean by that is that we had practitioners of those practices in my family. We also had practitioners of Ifa in Santeria. Now, Ifa and Cuban Santeria were not my calling, so I never proceeded or progressed on those paths. But along with that, we had 21 divisions, Sanse and Espiritismo. So I grew up in an Espiritista household, and growing up in an Espiritista household was quite amazing. Because when you have a grandmother who's an espiritista, it's a beautiful thing. Because they're actually very clear. They're very loving, compassionate, filled with joy and positive force. And all, I wouldn't give it up for anything. So, I grew up with my grandmother. Also with my grandfather. And I would see, or my mother would sometimes, and my father, I would sometimes see them, sometimes go to their houses, so on and so forth. Like many epiritita, people with the calling, brujos, people with the calling, we experience the world differently. So, right off the bat, I knew I saw the world differently. And I can remember from the tiniest time that I saw the world differently, things were different for me. 
they weren't the same, I didn't see from the same point of mind or view as my peers. And I grew up with my cousin, almost like a brother, for like the beginning, I forget, eight or nine years of my life. So it was a great experience. However, like people who have been given away by their parents, right? When you're a kid, you want to go back to your parents. So that's an area that was an area of difficulty until I really fell into the flow. However, I experienced my first spiritual possession really early on in 89. And from there... And before that point, I can recall having dreams and seeing things and telling my grandmother about things and her telling me that these are things that exist in the world and that basically over time I would come to understand them. I had my possession. I got possessed by an ancestral spirit. And then after that, I was possessed by a saint, a misterio. So that marked a lot of my journey in Espiritismo and La 21 División, as well as Sanse. Okay, so the saint that I mounted was a misterio of the 21 divisions. And so that was known, that that would be along my path. Growing up, I had many visions, I had dreams, I knew things in advance, the spirits would show me how to do things, I would make predictions, and at times there were times where I would get mounted. And being the way that things were back then, getting mounted randomly is not good. So my grandmother and my aunt helped me with this. And my aunt, which wasn't actually my aunt, it's actually more like my great aunt, I believe is how you call it in English. So my grandmother's sister, okay, two sisters came in to play heavily in my my growing up and my learning spirituality and Sansi, getting initiated in Sansi in La 21 División. And I underwent my refresco and I had my first ceremony in Sanse. That's when I commenced really learning about things and serving as an aplaza. To serve as an ablaza means that you're serving the misterio, you're serving the loa when it gets mounted in the head of the carayo, the person who is the vessel for the spirit. So I served as an ablaza. In that time, I was taken and shown many of these traditions. I met many santeros growing up, paleros, many people, caballos de misterio, so on and so forth, spiritual workers who were my aunt's clients or friends, fellow brujos, or people that they would send to each other. Back then, things worked on a referral system. Basically, there wasn't pop-up shops and pop-up brujería. There wasn't pop-up brujos everywhere. 
If you went to a place, there was very few brujos usually there. But in places with large communities of ours, Hispanic communities, there might be more brujos. And the brujos are known for their various specialties as far as different things that they're known how to do or different santos that they know how to work with or that they mediate with. And back then, brujos and espiritita very often referred each other clients. So you might come to someone and you would be referred to a specialist in essence. The work really worked like medicine, and many of my brujos, many of my brujos in San Jose 21 Division, a lot of you know this, and I love y'all for this, that we always say, like, basically, in union, there's force, in unity, there's power. The power lies in unity. But that statement, in la unión está la fuerza, is really so deep and powerful. Because really that statement right there has so many layers of knowledge within it. In unity is the force. And so I got to have a wonderful time in my growing up meeting and getting to know and training and learning from not only my own teachers which was mainly my grandmother and my two aunts and an uncle that participated in it. Okay. But also getting to meet and learn many things of many traditions from many of Los Viejos, the old people back then. So I was told when... I was born, I was born sick and born marked. Marked for the path, but I was also born sick. And I got to know the bruja that cured me. And she would never let me forget it. And I love her. Tons. She's still living today. But she's very old. Anyway, that's a little side note. I may go into a few little tangents here because it's kind of a long topic. Okay. I started my third level initiation in Sanse, which is the highest level of initiation that only very few people ever reach because it's something that Second level initiation really assists most people and many with most things in life. So I reached that point in 97 where I started to unravel that. Nineteen ninety seven. So in that time, prior to that time. Prior to 97, I was training intensely, learning from Los Misterios, Los Sere, but also from my teachers, my godparents, my godmothers, and my godfather. And I had a very uh, rich spiritual culture given to me. In 97, I commenced that initiation in Sanse with my godmother. And that process finished up in 99-2000. About 99 and 2000. So, right around there. Somewhere in there. (laughs) It's been a very long time. And I'm not good with that. Anyway, I think it was like 2000. 
just before 2000, actually. I remember the Y2K. So, that. It was a very long and arduous process, but a beautiful one. I was then directed to go to Haiti and was supposed to go, but in 0203, I believe it was 0203, 2002, 2003, my grandmother and my godmother passed away. Shortly apart from each other. Who was my main caballo, my main teacher, madrina. So, eventually from there, I was guided by the misterio, by the loi, to make my own passageway into Haiti. And so I did. And... I underwent my first initiation ceremony there. When I did that, it brought me a lot of issue in many different ways. And unfortunately, everything wasn't done properly by the person who did it. So, eventually that needed to be corrected. I resolved that first in my own altar with the brujos that I knew, so on. And then, eventually, I went back to Haiti. I lived in Haiti as well. So after that first initiation that was, you know, improperly done, I was still felt blessed. And so I used it as a springing board to open the door to go back to Haiti. Over the years of being in Haiti, I studied and I learned with various hungans and mambos and very often was offered to reinitiate. But none of the people that I was with or around had quite yet turned to be who I should. The Misterios didn't give me the passage. They didn't give me the permission to do so. Twice I was actually offered to initiate completely for free. Just with material. And this is because the quality of my loa and the, the Misterios that came through. So, during that time living in Haiti, I learned Creole. And when I first entered Haiti, I just went with kind of like what I knew my Creole from my 21 division, which was a handful of it, right, and a handful more of Creole. So I really went and jumped out on a le ledge there. But I managed, I made it through. I learned a lot. I learned intensely. And at the end of that period, eventually I came to find who would initiate me next. to resolve that ceremony. I underwent that next conzo. And that resolved things. And I moved forward with my spiritual work. And from there, so since all the way back when, I had commenced to start working for people spiritually. During this, during my lifetime, my walking through this path spiritually, it's been a very long and intense journey. Many good things happened. Many bad things happened. Many things that people would consider bad and many things that people would consider good have happened to me. And one thing that 
I never did really was to let go of my mysteries. Many things upon that, imagine to yourself, from 89 to present day, have happened. A lot of stuff. Okay? But, I never let go of my misterios. No matter what happened, I never let go of my misterios. And let me tell you, a lot of shit happened. A lot. Okay? I was homeless, I believe, four times. Okay? And just so that you know, if you ever be homeless, there are apartments at the cemetery. That's most of the time where I went to live when I was homeless. So I was homeless four times. In that time, I also had, in a short period of time, one time in one year, I moved about 19 times. 19 times in a year. Do you hear me? Okay, that's almost like every other week. But that's how it was. Because that was part of the lessons and the journey that I had to learn. I was poor, I was broke, penniless. I've had money, I've not had money. I've had light, I've not had light in my house. I've had heat and I've ha- not had heat. But always with my mysteries, holding on to the misterio and never letting go. And my life has been immensely blessed by the mystery. I have been chosen to work for them and serve the the purpose. I have happiness, freedom, and joy. Peace and balance. No matter what all these things that occurred, okay, they didn't stain me. They didn't change the essence of who I am. And just so that you know who I am present day. I'm a person that I see your essence. And since I see your essence, that's what I look at. I don't care to judge you. I see all of those things too. All the layers of BS. All the layers of everything else that is not the essence of who you really are. What I care about and what I see is the essence of who you really are as a person. And I can see that. And I can see that just as clearly as I can see all the layers. And in life... What people care about with you is all your layers. But that's not really who you are. Those are things that you may have had to do. Those are things that you may have been. Those are things where you've come from. Those are things that have been imposed upon you. Those are lies. Those are traumas. Those are things that people have hurt or done to you. Those are karmas of what you've done to others. Many of these things through fear and lack of true connection to the Great One. And so, I'm a person that I don't look at the layers. I see them. I look at them. I know them. But what I care about is the essence of who you are. What's all the way deep, the deepest part of you that is beyond and behind all of that. That person who's actually 
good, good-hearted, innocent, pure, has a pure nature. And I'm a person that, because I can see this way, because the spirit and the work that I've put in has given me this, it's something that I can give to you. It's something that I can provide to others. How to reach this. Anyone who knows me, who's really met me and know me, will say that nothing disturbs me. Will say that everything just rolls. And it's because of what the work, the spiritual work, the Sanse work, the 21 Division work has given to me. Okay? A total state of peace and freedom. If you can never remember a time where you felt totally happy, totally free, totally at peace and joy, like anything was possible, but nothing was needed. And you were totally felt true freedom. Like all the world is yours and you are all the world. That's what our work gives. That's what our work can give to you. That's what this spiritual work truly has in it. Not all spiritual work has that, but this one does. True bliss and joy, enlightenment and balance and success in the world. I have a godchild that sometimes says they're going to write a story about my journey and the time they've been with me. Because when they first started with me, they met me. And what Papa had was a mattress on the floor. A room that he rented from someone. And a closet that was also rented for the altar. And now, things don't make or break you. Remember that. So this, I'm telling it to you, but it doesn't mean anything. And yet it does. Now I have my own house. My own bathroom. And it's been like this for a long time in my life. That I've attained these things. We say that certain things you need in your life in order for it to make it easy to be peaceful, happy, and balanced. And if you don't have those things, it's going to be difficult for you to have peace, happiness, and balance. We can we show you how to have it with and without so that you can always have that. And that's been my journey spiritually. There have been times of confusion, In times of great clarity. Okay. Now. I have really unraveled. My. Me spiritually. Myself. And so. When you have that. The world is yours. There is nothing that is not. And yet, you don't even need it. It's some real crazy stuff. It's the paradox of the spiritual power. But that's a whole nother podcast, alright? And this is just an overview outline of my spiritual path and my journey. Many things will happen. Many things will be ups and downs. You will live. But if you're really doing the true spiritual work, 
the true path, walking upon this pathless path, then you will reach. If you haven't reached, and you don't know how to reach, and you've tried, and you're stuck, you're frustrated, confused, Go to your spirits first and talk with them. Give them some light and some water. And then contact us. Book a session with us. Book a session with me so that the spirits can direct you, so that we can give you the guidance, the clarity, and the direction that you need. Because happiness, joy, freedom... These things, these are things you should have. And they are things that in you, you know you should have them. So, that's why we're here. Showing you. And opening the doors for you to get them. So I I hope you enjoyed this podcast. And, hey, leave me some comments. Um, put it up on a blog post, and then go ahead and leave me some comments. Let me know what you think. Lastly, as always, make sure that you subscribe iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Anchor.fm, Stitcher, Spotify, Papa Hector Salva, HectorSalva.com, where is the blog? And YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Hungan Hector, H O U N G A N Hector, A G C T O R. Thank you for listening. And many blessings to all of you. Remember to keep the faith. And we'll speak soon.